We all know what you are saying, William. No, Brock, you do not understand. I am a part of this militia and will continue to be. I more than understand there's a war going on. I just think that in this case we should wait and not make the first move. We have to move. We must strike first. We cannot let your personal war hinder the militia. We have to move now. Moving forward means nothing if we have no one behind us. If we hesitate, those blasted redcoats will have us and our freedom will be lost. Brock, you sound like Adams and the Sons of Liberty. They are too radical. Do you not think that radical is what is needed at this point? Do not forget, William, they fired the first shots. Radical, yet sensible. Some think those shots were provoked. Sensible. How can we be sensible? Sensible has long been thrown out the window. William, freedom is insensible to those who want to maintain their tyranny over us. And bowing to England. We're not bowing to England. England and her king care for nothing but power. England desires a land that God has destined to be free, and I, for one, intend to go after our freedom with fierceness. England will yield. And do not forget, long before Lexington or Concord, Beverly Robinson and the Manor Lords tried to take our lands away from us. Governor Tryon sent two regiments and cannons pursuing us for months, killing our neighbors, innocent people, and you want me to give them respect. You're just defending our rights, those which have been trampled on and taken away. Yes, Eve. And now there is word that the British are advancing south from Canada, and that General Howe and Tryon plan to send their forces north from New York City to take the whole Hudson Valley. If they are successful, they will divide the colonies in half. But if we could just get the Parliament to listen to us... Are you serious, might... William? They passed tax after tax without representation. They took all the wheat and flour from our families. Do you forget so easily? I just want to be more than a rebel. We cannot give up our freedom. And that, William, you are already a rebel. If I did not know you, William, I would think you were a loyalist. you and what do you want? Lieutenant Nash, sir. My name is Gavin Fairfax. Yes, Mr. Fairfax, and what can I do for you? Sir, I am very loyal to the Crown and I wish to serve. Yes, as a loyalist it is your duty to serve the Crown. Now please see my guard outside for instructions. No, sir. Let me be clear. I want to be an informant. <laughs> yes. Of course, everyone uh wants to be a spy. A very exciting prospect, is it not? Yes, but not everyone has connections to Colonel Henry Ludington. You know Henry Ludington? Not personally, but I know people who do know Ludington. And I feel I can greatly benefit the Crown. Well, Mr. Fairfax, I think you can be of service. Please take a seat and we shall talk. <laughs> yes, Lieutenant. Now, any information you bring to me, I will report directly to General Tryon. General Tryon reports to General Howe. With the information we gather here in New York, we hope to deal a severe blow to the rebellion here in the colonies. I am certain, sir, that I can be of service. Hello, Sybil. Are they here? Yes, Father. Here and arguing. Stay seated, gentlemen. Colonel Ludington, sir. Colonel Ludington, Colonel, sir. Brock, do not let England's treachery turn you against a friend. I've just had it with William's eloquent speeches. I am just saying that this could be nothing more than a rebellion. Perhaps we should begin pursuing peace before any more blood is shed. Our fight for freedom is not a rebellion. It is a righteous cause. Just one moment, men. Why don't you just go and join the Tories, William? We do not need your help. Brock, settle yourself. Arguing like this will get us nowhere. We are here because we believe in the same cause. 
That causes freedom. He could be a traitor for I am no traitor! Somebody lacks the courage to take a stand! Brock, stop being so hot-headed! Simply because I disagree with you, that makes me a traitor. I was so- My father has given his life for freedom and would sacrifice his life for any one of you. And this is how you behave? Oh, Sybils, if a girl like you can understand, Take I want so more girl. than a girl. I do know what you want, William. You need resolve. Your resistance alone calls your loyalty to England. It leaves your loyalty to freedom and my father in question. Do not question my loyalty. I've proven my loyalty. Then where is your faith? It is God's plan for all men to be free. And you all know that there are times when we must fight for that freedom. I would be sewing. What better thing is there to do than sew? Ooh, here you are. You may help me. Cassie, you know I do not sew. That musket hasn't been used in quite some time now. It was my father's. Oh, Cassie. No. You might as well clean it now. Do you think William's struggle with the war has anything to do with the loss of your father? Mm. I think William feels the need to protect my family. And he seems to think that the best way to do that is by avoiding the conflict. What he doesn't understand is that my father fought for this family. You, you cannot avoid the conflict. There's just too much at stake. Soon he'll have to understand that he has to stand up for freedom, our freedom. When will you come ride with me? I would much rather be sewing. My dear friend, when will you give up this love for just sewing, sewing, and sewing? When will you give up your love for horses and muskets? <laughs> that will never happen. Likewise. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> You're so amusing. Just go. I need to finish this dress. Oh, by the way. This dress I am making was supposed to be a surprise. Colonel Ludington is able to lead the militia, he will be a threat to our British troops. 
Having served the Crown himself, he knows how we operate. We must capture him. Lieutenant Nash, sir. Ledington is kept apprised. No one is certain how. He must have a spy. One would think the 300 guinea reward we placed on his head would be enough to make some more persistent in capturing him for us. Yes, sir. And what would the reward be for spies like myself? The privilege of serving the crown, Mr. Fairfax. I deserve more. My own guineas will help. I will not pay you yet, Mr. Fairfax. I will, however, guarantee you the recognition you deserve from General Howe. You will get nothing if you do not deliver to me the information I need. I, too, am under intense pressure from General Tryon to succeed. Do not worry. I've been invited to Edgar Danby's for dinner. He's an influential loyalist, and I hope to gather information there. Very well. Now leave quickly and make sure you're not seen. You missed the meeting last night. Your father had me make a trip to Fishkill to make ready the ammunition for the militia. Brock and Eden argued with William all night. William is too strong-willed. The Lord will change William, just as he will turn my father's heart to the side of freedom. I know William wants to settle within his heart that he is not rebelling against England. All he has known is the crown and British rule. There is always a price for freedom. William will soon accept that. Henry, little Abigail and Tardis are sleeping. Where? Where are they sleeping? Shh, they're in the other room. They've only been there a short time. <sighs> but I'm not sure where Mother is. She left and told me to take care of Abigail and Tardis. But I want to find Mother! Paul, before you go... Before you go where? Henry, you should be upstairs. I am looking for Mother. Henry, go back upstairs and get ready for bed. Sybil, it's still early. I am talking to Paul. All right. <coughs> Sybil, have you heard? Heard what, Archibald? The Tories. The Tories are coming for Father at dawn. They are planning to capture him. Yes. Amy Crosby brought your father the message today after spying on the British. You knew this? Yes, the colonel has the matter well at hand. The reward that has been placed for his capture has made evading enemies grow more difficult each day. And God will continue to protect him. What shall we do? It's fine. The militia is already in place, and the colonel has ordered the men. I will get Rebecca and we will keep watch. Rebecca is in the kitchen with Mother. Father is leaving again. Very well, Archibald. Now go upstairs with the children. Ah. Uh. All right. I must go join my father. He's having his loyalist friend over for dinner at our home. Will you be with the militia later? Not yet. But rest assured, my father's heart will change. I'll join them soon. I understand. I am committed. It will happen. I want my father to embrace the cause for freedom. I will pray for him. Quincy, where's your brother? Paul went to Colonel Ludington's home. I cannot agree with Beverly Robinson. There are rules in war. Assassination of an officer is wrong. Father, did you hear me? Edgar Danby, your son belongs to the militia? No, indeed, sir. Yes, Quincy, I did hear you. The militia are rebel scum led by that troublemaker Henry Ludington. Why would your son be at the Ludingtons unless he were in the militia? My son is not a rebel, Gavin. He is quite spirited about his independence. But he is not a rebel. No. I'm not part of the militia. Yet. Paul seems very close to Colonel Ludington. Quincy. Hmm. Like who? Like Eaton Boswell. Quincy, that's enough. Mr. Danby, have you ever heard of guilt by association? No. No, Gavin. I know Paul. He is simple young and does not understand. Father! I believe in our faith in God and his plan for my country, sir. 
God. You think the answer lies in heaven? I would rather think that the answer lies in the crown, young man. the toys are coming for father. Yes, Sybil. It will be all right. Your father has the matter well at hand. When will they learn that father is never going to stop? Probably not until the war is over. We must always just stay prepared. And all will be well, as it always has been. Now, both of you take these things to your father. Be all right, Sybil. God is with us. Yes, Mother. Yes, Mother. We are as Mason declared, not of the conquered, but of the conquered. Yes, and I agree. Rights alone belong to the king. The king and only the king. England is our motherland. Gavin, my son was born in the colonies. He simply does not understand. Nonetheless, your son should be loyal to the crown, for he's rebel scum. Then let him be a rebel. I am resolute, and I have chosen my loyalty. It is to God and my country. Remember, young man, England is your country and it deserves your loyalty. Loyalists, such as your friend Robinson, have pushed people out of their land and England will soon do the same to us. You speak as a rebel, yet you're the son of a respected loyalist. How do you, sir, define allegiance? Blind servitude? We will not stand by blindly while England takes away our rights and our freedom. Our independence has come. And as we are led by Colonel Ludington, New York and the colonies will soon be free from England's tyranny. Unless those loyal to the crown get to Ludington and kill him first. Please use caution, Henry. I will, Abigail. You know the importance of coming home. I always have. I always have. The Lord has always made a way. Bye, Henry. Bye, Abigail. I will see you at dawn. At dawn. Something about Gavin Fairfax that I do not like. I do not trust him. Gavin has been a friend for many years. I understand, but I believe that his bitterness has made his loyalty to the crown higher than to his friends. It's not possible, Tilly. We are on the same side. No, Edgar. He shows no respect to our sons or to you as their father. The boys will come around. Their hearts will turn. Edgar, I believe it is you whose heart will turn toward our sons. 
I should have known. You turn to the side of the rebels. I am close, Edgar. But it's because I see the heart of my sons. And I know the heart of my husband as well. I believe in you. I know that you will be coming around. cannot wait until Father can just stay home and spend time with us. I pray that day comes soon. Will Father be safe on this trip? Yes, no need to be concerned. The militia are guarding him and they are strong. They would be stronger if Paul were with them. Brock and Eaton are with them and they are strong. William will be strong as well, Rebecca. No, Mary. William is not yet loyal to the cause. William believes for freedom and has fought for it. He just struggles with the war. I've been praying for William. Soon he will come around. Yes, he will. As soon as he realizes it's not about rebellion. It's about our life here and our families. All right, the both of you, enough talk about boys in the militia. I have musket practice in the morning. And someone has to teach those men how to shoot. <laughs> you must aim higher and hold your breath as you prepare to fire. Watch me. You are both late. Let us get on with our practice. Perfect. Not so perfect. You are shooting the target, William, not the ground. You must aim higher and hold steady. Watch me. How does she do? Let me see if I can best the Colonel's daughter. Not like it. Perfect again. With more practice, I'll be ready for the militia in no time. Very good, Paul. Unlike William, I do believe you have potential. Thanks for boosting confidence, Sybil. How does she do that? I have a gift.
How was dinner at the Danby's, Mr. Fairfax? It went well. Edgar Danby remains loyal to the Crown, but his eldest son, Paul, sides with the rebels. Very good information to know. House divided cannot stand. More information actually came from the youngest Danby, Quincy. He so happened to let out the name of a man within Ludington's inner circle, an Eton Boswell. You think he may be one of Ludington's spies? I do, since Paul Danby was so quick to silence the young Danby when he mentioned Boswell's name. Excellent. I'll send word to General Tryon and await his direction. So David places a smooth stone in his slingshot. He raises the slingshot above his head and starts twirling and twirling. Everyone, twirl your slingshots. Then he released the stone. The stone flew through the air and hit Goliath right in the head. Then Goliath, whoop, boom, hits the ground and David won. So remember, no matter how young you are, God can use you. Someday, I'll be a great soldier, just like Father was. I do hope the war will be over before you're old enough. Nathaniel believes in freedom just as I do. You are as brave as your father was, Nathaniel. How many redcoats did Father take down? Enough to make a difference. No one is counting, Nathaniel. The difference your father's life has made it's found in the courage. Stand for what he believed in. My father has a plan to stop the Redcoats. Your father is a very brave man too, Mary. Mother, tell Mary what your name means. My name means a free person. And I know that my husband loved our family so much that he was willing to fight for our freedom. He gave his life for us. We must always remember that the price for freedom often costs life. I could never regret what your father has done for our freedom. Look everyone, there are angels in the clouds. <gasps> I see them too. Oh, Addie, you're right. We must always remember that God's hand is with us. Father, your faith is so strong. Our faith lies in our Creator. He is the person of our faith. And His words, they are life to us. I see no angels. I see musket smoke. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas Whalen. William Compton, my friend. What are you doing back in Fredericksburg? My friend Agrippa Hull from Massachusetts is talking of enlisting in the Continental Army next month. I believe he'll be in General Patterson's brigade. There are quite a few free blacks who've enlisted there. When did you leave Savannah? About a month ago. It was too difficult to maintain my freedom in the South. I'm thinking of enlisting in the Continental Army in Colonel Henry Livingston's 4th New York Regiment next month. You are joining the Continental Army? Yes. This is an important fight for our freedom. It is the Declaration of Our Independence that states all men are created equal. 
After this fight for freedom, there is yet another. And I will continue to preach the freedom God intends for us to have. The abolitionists are determined. Even John Jay is working diligently for the freedom of all. I believe you will see him as governor of New York one day. Freedom, all freedom, is the God-given right of every man. It's something that must be fought for. I'm beginning to see that more and more. Reverend Thomas Whalen. Brock Dennison. It's good to see you, my friend. How have things been? They've been interesting. You were at Silver Bluff Baptist Church with David George, were you not? Yes, I was. And how long has it been? About a year. To think, it was only two years ago when David George was baptized by Reverend Palmer. And now David is using the Bible to teach 30 folks to read. Amazing. And what brings you back to New York? I'm joining the Continental Army. Good for you. The fight for freedom is on. What do you think of that, William? A man choosing to be a rebel. Yes, Brock, I've got your point. You know, I believe the battle with England is only a fight within the war for freedom. And someday, I believe every person in our country will have total freedom. Quincy, I know you have a passion for freedom. I do as well. But when will we fight? Father will support our cause soon. Once he believes in freedom as we do, he will give us his blessing. But if it's not soon, the war will be over. Quincy, you have a couple of years to wait anyway. Oh, waiting is so difficult. Until then, we can be happy by helping Colonel Ludington deliver the supplies. Mr. Fairfax, I have news from General Tryon that concerns you. It would be an honor to be of service to the General. On the 26th of April, British forces will march on the city of Danbury, Connecticut. They will take the city's stores and burn it to the ground. I'm to go to Danbury then? No, you fool! General Tryon will then march to Ridgefield. The General's worried that if Colonel Ludington gets word of the invasion, he will gather his militia. What am I to do, sir? We need Ludington. If Ludington is able to gather his men, He'll surely cause problems for Governor Tryon. Colonel Ludington is always well guarded. I am doing my best, sir. And, and sir. it's not enough! You have less than one month, now go. the most beautiful dress you have ever seen. Cassie, you're such an eloquent lady. However did you become my dearest friend? However? My dear friend Sybil, I will soon turn your interest into sewing, rather than muskets riding horses and cleaning barns. I think not. I sew only when I must. Well, just wait and see what I shall wear to your party. I'm sure it'll be beautiful. I will surprise everyone with what I'm wearing. We shall dance, and we shall shine, and we shall look absolutely divine. You are so prim. William, come here. Look at this. It looks nice. No, William. It's beautiful. Yes, of course. That is what I meant. <laughs> are you not excited? Sybil will be 16 and will have such a grand time at her party. A grand time at the Emily. Enough fun, sir.
everyone. Attention. I would like to ask a friend, a free man, Reverend Thomas Waylands, if he would say a few words and give a birthday blessing for my dear Sybil. Reverend? Thank you, Colonel. I'm honored. I know we are celebrating this joyous occasion in the midst of war. And Sybil, your love and respect for your father is a blessing to many. We know that we are engaged in such a great struggle. And today, amidst it all, we celebrate Sybil. On this 16th birthday celebration of yours, I want to share something with you. Your life has something only you and you alone can do. You're the reflection of one beautiful girl who has the courage to stand, the courage to bring about change, and the courage to make a difference. I declare our God's hand is upon you and his richest blessings be upon you. Amen. Archibald, this is ridiculous. The horses need water, not just a drop of water. Ugh, Sybil, I've been working all day. I had to milk the cows. And I had to make breakfast and feed our brothers and sisters. And if I remember, you dilly-dallied in the yard looking for the militia. Yes, and what shall that mean to you? It means you did not give the horses their water. Father is leaving again tonight, and his horse must be well-fed and have plenty of water. Sybil! Is that you, Cassie? Sybil, William told me that your father's leaving again tonight. I wanted to stop by see how you were doing. Cassie, this war has brought so much turmoil. I know we must be brave and stand for what we believe. Sybil, you are brave. You are the bravest young lady I know. Brave? Maybe. But to me, she's a pestering sister. <laughs> Sybil, you must cheer up. After all, you are now 16. Yes. And what shall I do at 16? Sybil? Mother, I don't want father leaving again. It seems as if he has hardly been home. It will be all right, Sybil. You must not give in to fear. Fear has no part of you. God is with us, and we are in his hands. It is just so different when your own family has been threatened by the enemy. And sometimes it feels like fear lords over us as England tries. But who is Lord, Sybil? That sounds so simple, Mother. Oh, faith is simple. And it is built on the truth of God's scripture. 
The reason that we're in this land to begin with is so that we would be free to have God's word. We have already had many struggles in this free land with many battles and many lives. Our faith in God will not let us fail. And God will not allow the lives of all those that have gone before us to be for naught. Well, I'm ready to leave. The militia has already moved most of the supplies up from Fishkill. All right. What is going on in here? Our daughter is dealing with her father leaving again so soon. We have stood too strongly, and God has not brought us this far to let us fail now. We will continue to stand, Sybil, until we have that final victory, and we shall have it. Throughout the years, Sybil, God has brought our family through every situation we have ever faced, and he will do the same this time as well. Together as a family, we will get through this. My family means so much to me. And our family has purpose. A purpose to live, to love, to believe, to do what God's called us to do with courage. And Sybil, you have purpose and you have courage. I must take my leave. I'll be back in a few days. Goodbye, Henry. Goodbye, Abigail. Goodbye, Father. Stay safe. I love you. I love you, too. Father. Okay. Yes, Sybil? You're kept under the shadow of his wings. you wanted to serve the crown. I do, sir. I do. You are a miserable failure, Mr. Fairfax. Do you know what today's date is? It's the 25th. Yes, it's the 25th. Tomorrow I ride to Danbury to meet General Tryon. We must stop Ludington tonight. I do not know what to do. What you will do is go with my men and capture Eaton Boswell. I can do that. Pray tell, Mr. Fairfax, can you? Can you really? I can, sir. After that, you go with my men and surround Ludington's home. You must stop Ludington tonight. But I am just a spy, sir. If you do not deliver, then you are nothing. You will have proven worthless to me. And if you are proven worthless, Mr. Fairfax, I'll be forced to remove the Crown's protection. And you know what that means, don't you? Yes, I understand, sir. William, how badly do I shoot? Well, it seems there is one person that can shoot better than you. That is Mary Ludington. <laughs> here, here, my friend. Nathaniel is such a bad aim. That does not count. And why not? Because she's a girl and a Ludington. Goodbye, my friends. This is my turn. Goodbye, Eaton. <laughs> Bye, Eaton. William, look. A great shot. <laughs> one day, you will shoot as well as I do. That would not take much. Nathaniel, respect <laughs> your elders now. <laughs> William, did you see I shot three redcoats? Perfect. 
Don't forget, you must reload after each shot, though. Now make ready, aim, fire! That's it! You've taken out another red coat! Goodbye, Nathaniel. Goodbye, William. <laughs> Take that, you red coat. <laughs> They've taken Eaton. Who's taken Eaton? The Tories. The Tories have taken him. Miss Lena, what shall we do? Mary, you must go home. Tell your mother and Sybil. Yes, I'll go quickly. Mama, will Eaton be all right? Yes, Addie, we will believe. God's hand is upon him. Mother, what can I do? Nathaniel, you must go tell William and Paul. They'll know how to reach Colonel Lettington. Yes, Mother. Caught speed, Nathaniel. Return home quickly. We shall be praying. He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Yes, Rebecca. What will happen to Eaton? God's hand is upon Eaton. I'm sure Father will have a plan when he returns. Sybil. Yes, Rebecca. What if someone tries to come and get us? Then we will defend ourselves. You mean like, shoot them? Shh. Rebecca, did you hear that? Hear what? Rebecca calmly, with no alarm, walked back into the house. Wrong, Sybil. The house is being surrounded. What do we do? Maybe we should tell them Father's not here. Even though that is true, they will not believe us. Quickly, children. Each of you take a lamp into a room. We must make it look as if we are well protected. 
So we'll gather every musket that we have and be prepared to run from room to room. We must not let them know that we're here alone. Yes, Mother. Looks quiet. Yes, it does. Prepare the men. Look, another light. Sir, a musket. just lit up. Another musket. Mother, I see them. May I shoot? No, not yet. I'm praying that they leave. This does not look good at all. Now's not the time. Take leave and retreat. It appears they are leaving. My prayers have been answered. Thank the Lord you're all right. I heard about last night. How is everyone? Everyone is fine. The children are in town with mother. Eaton has been captured. Come. We must go in the house and talk. Gentlemen, Sybil. Clearly the British are concentrating their efforts towards me. I have a feeling something big will be happening soon. We have to rescue Eaton. They probably think he's a spy, and you know what they do to spies. Yes. You're right, Brock. First, William, we have fought together. I know that you are loyal, and I know that you love your freedom. I appreciate what you have done, but it is time to do more, William. You need to bring resolve to your passion. I need your heart in this. There's no turning back now. I am ready, Colonel. I am fully committed, sir. Your heart is settled then? Yes, sir. Since the night of the argument with Brock and Eden, much has changed. I've seen yours and Sybil's courage. Speaking with Thomas Wayland, finding out that he, a free black man, believes in freedom so much that he is willing to fight for the freedom of a country that does not yet allow the freedom of his brothers. I've heard the stories of the British burning civilian homes and innocent people being killed. Our fellow countrymen and British prisoner of warships off the coast, not being fed or cared for, left to die. Now they have taken Eaton, and they will surely execute him if we do not rescue him. I see now that this is not a rebellion, this is a fight for our lives. Now is the time for our freedom. I am so very happy to hear that, William. So, for the matter of Eaton, it is evident that the British are trying to get to me. Can anyone think of any way that the British would know to single Eaton out from the rest of the men? Gavin Fairfax. Who? Gavin Fairfax, that's who. Who is Gavin Fairfax? He's a friend of my father's. He came to our home for dinner one night. Quincy started bragging and spilled Eaton's name. He's bitterly loyal to the Crown and has an unhealthy need for attention. He also had a few unkind words to say about you, Colonel. All right then. It's possible Gavin Fairfax knows where Eaton is. Do you know where Fairfax is?
Mr. Fairfax, I presume. Yes. Come with us, sir. Hello, Mr. Fairfax. I'm Colonel Henry Luddington. It's a pleasure to meet you. What is the meaning of this? You tell me, sir. You're the one running as if you were guilty of something. I'm guilty of nothing but being loyal to the Crown. <laughs> yes, right. I need to know the whereabouts of one Eaton Boswell. And if I knew, why should I tell you? Because, sir, I can have you taken in as a spy. He is the Colonel. All right, I'll tell you where he is, but you must guarantee me that you will tell no one I've given you this information. Fool. Stop being so stubborn. Just tell me what I want to know about Ludington. Then when we're finished with this little rebellion and the war is over, you can go free. I think you mean after we win this war. <laughs> and all prisoners are rescued, I will go free. And no, I'll tell you again. I'm not telling you anything. <sighs> foolish, foolish man. I'm going to Danbury to meet with General Tryon. We will be burning the city tonight. You will see our victory. Then you will talk, or you will hang. The British have moved in on Danbury. Danbury is burning. Come in. Come in, Abigail. Help Thomas. Mary, get a blanket. <coughs> Rebecca, get, get Thomas some hot chocolate to help him. We are going to have to muster the troops. I will go. Sybil, you cannot. Mother, is she really going? Yes, Mary. Sybil's the only one. I must stay here, meet the men, prepare to move. Use caution. Use this. Bang on the houses. Wake the people. Say, call to arms, call to arms, the British have burned Danbury. The militia is needed. Call to arms. You have a long, hard ride ahead of you. God will go with you. Pray with me before I go. <sighs> Heavenly Father, I pray that you watch over my beloved Sybil. Protect her. Send your angels to watch over her and keep her safe. Bring her back. Amen. Amen. Godspeed. Sybil. God.
God is with us. I love you all. Mark, sir. Burn it. Sir. I count only three guards. Yeah, it seems there should be more. I wonder where they are. I'm not sure. But we're only outnumbered by one. This should be easy. Oh yes, we probably don't even need these. Here's the plan. You hide behind the fence on that side, I'll hide on this side. When I say go, count to 500. When you reach 500, fire to the guard on your left. Alright. Wait, what if I miss? William, for once in your life, do not miss. Alright. We need to fire at the same time. That should overwhelm the remaining guard inside. Alright, yes. Count to 500 when you say go. Don't let yourself be seen. Really? So don't wear my bright new red waistcoat, but it's the latest style. On my mark. Mark. Wait! What is it, William? I thought you were going to say go. Go. Call to arms! Call to arms! Sybil, is that you? Yes, sir. What are you doing here? The British have burned Danbury. The militia is needed. Call to arms. This cannot be. It is true, Mr. Danby. Now I must go. Father. Edgar, the time to fight is now. You're right, Paul. This has gone too far. We must go. We? Yes. Let me gather my things. All right, William, aim high, hold your breath. Brock, I hit him! Come on, William. You were late. I was late. I was away from 241. Oh, I apologize. Was I not please? clear enough? A child can count faster than you. Excuse me. Kind of Maybe you are fooling around. We can get a job done. Call to arms! Call to arms! The British are burning Danbury. The militia is needed. Call to arms!
Aiden. I have news from a messenger, sir. General Wooster and General Arnold are at Reading, and I have sent word that the British are leaving Danbury. General Silliman and General Arnold are taking 400 men to Ridgefield to cut them off. The message is that we are to join Colonel Bradley and the 5th Connecticut under Colonel Drake in your command, sir. General Wooster is taking the remaining 200 men with Colonel Huntington to launch a rear attack. Uh, the word is out. And with the Lord's help, we shall show the British our resolve. Wooster has left Danbury then. We will move forward. We will intercept and give battle. Gather the men, form a line. It will be dawn soon. We leave immediately. Yes, Colonel. Gather together, men, form a line. I will return, Abigail. Yes, I know you will. Goodbye, children. I love you all. Give Sybil my love and my praise upon her return. I will. God is with you. Now go. We have a victory, Colonel. Sybil, because of your courage, we were able to stop the British advancement into New York. We all did this together. 